Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to Emma's Market Spotlight on India. Lovely to see so many of you here. My name is Michelle Ronquillo, and I am Emma's event manager. Just a little bit about us within Emma, we unite music managers, organizations across 13 European countries, and we, which represent more than 2,000 managers across Europe. We've made it our mission to strengthen European managers globally through our Air Empower program, which encompasses education, advocacy, networking, and research. Empower is a project co-founded by the European Union. If you want to know about us or you want to stay up to date with the upcoming events, make sure to visit our website, follow us on social media, and join us um, on our WhatsApp group. Sign up also to our newsletter. Uh, I will put the links in the chat. Uh, within the chat, there is also a general manager contact list where you can leave your contact details and find the details of others. Also, when you log off Zoom at the end of the session, a super brief uh, survey will pop up. Please take a moment to fill it out as your feedback is super important um, to help us improve our upcoming events. I'm going to uh, share the agenda of today and uh, also just a reminder that there will be uh, time for you to ask questions. So make sure you write them in the chat and we'll make sure that they get um, answered. To we are in very good company today and this session was, will be moderated by Jess Patridge, uh, our executive director. Um, and without further ado, let's get into it. Jess, over to you. Thanks so much. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And of course, thank you to our wonderful speakers as well. Um, as many of you who are familiar with these sessions will know, we will start with a quick overview from the lovely Raphael, and then we will continue with more of a chat. I just want to say right from the start that we are, as Michelle said, very, very open to questions. So this is your time as managers to ask questions you want the answers to for India. So make sure you ask them, share your questions. I will be watching out for them throughout the session, but you can also um, wait until the end if you prefer. Um, I really recommend asking them at the beginning though, because the time goes super quick. Again, those of you who come often will know how quickly it can go. So um, before we get into it, uh, Raf, would you like to give us a little overview of India? We'd really appreciate it. Yeah, um, thanks, Jess. Uh, thanks, everyone. I, I think I forgot to uh, actually say hi to Dave, uh, Mega, Ditti, and Sushil. Um, we got straight into uh, our tech check. So hello to all the speakers. Um, thanks, Jess, uh, Michelle, um, and to all of you joining. I will quickly uh, share my screen. And uh, while I'm doing that, um, I just thought I'd mention you. Uh, we've got uh, subject matter experts um, on each of what I'm going to speak. So I'm just going to give you an overview of uh, some of those points uh, on the Indian music market. Um, and at this point, um, I, I should also mention it's um, maybe setting some context um, and explaining some um, some of the words or some of the language that you may hear um, during the conversation. So firstly, welcome uh, to India. Uh, we are the India Music Exchange, which is India's newly formed music trade office. Um, and uh, we're not just um, an export office. We are... Um, we are responsible for bilateral trade of both inbound and um, outbound uh, music trade. So I'm going to give you um, a snapshot of uh, what India is like and what the Indian music uh, market is like with some uh, overarching numbers by each vertical. Um, and it's really important for you to understand that India is a mobile first um, a market. So about 750 uh, million uh, mobile phones uh, with music capability, so radio sets and, and streaming capability. Um, and it is a 93% um, last surveyed uh, by the IMAI, 93% uh, Android market. Uh, you, you need to understand that 
the global streaming giants have mobile only plans uh, in india even for um for netflix and soon amazon will uh, will have a mobile uh, only subscription which is the the cheapest um, in the world um it's approximately 1 uh, 1.7 euros a, a month to subscribe to uh, the mobile only plan uh, in netflix per month in india uh we've we've got about uh, 1000 plus radio stations um in the country about four uh, of uh, those um, goes maximum to about six when you count the community radio stations uh, that play uh, international or english music um but we've got a posting and uh, overflowing live uh, event segment with uh, 15000 uh, plus music concerts and festivals that happen in the country um, approximately 100 of those are major large format festivals so the likes of um, sunburn supersonic uh, n87 weekend uh, lollapalooza bandland um uh, i'm missing quite a few but um, essentially to give you uh, an understanding asia's largest um, dance music festival happens in india asia's largest blues festival happens in india um, and at this point um, also asia's largest jazz festivals um, multiple of them ha- happen in india uh, we've got um, three indian dsps um, in india i will talk about them that um, but nine uh, major music ott platform that number is now eight because quite recently we we've had one um, domestic platform announcing that they are shutting down uh, operations um but we've got tons and tons of food uh, service establishments restaurants bars clubs um and venues that are using um, music in some way shape or form uh, it's important also for you to know that indians are uh, spending more time listening to music than the global average uh, so 2 hours currently but we're already on track uh, and that number is probably going to go uh, between 3 to 4 hours higher than the global average uh, at the end of this year um you should also know that the largest youtube channels um, in the world um, at this point come from india um if you just do a quick search of the the biggest artists on youtube uh, in india uh, as of 5 uh, days ago at least the top 6 out of the top 10 uh, indian artists and in indian artist pages um that's a little bit of a snapshot um in terms of uh, numbers um but let me quickly uh, talk about um about live um and when we uh, bef- before i get into live there was a tatmetic report of 2022 that spoke about trigger cities uh, where uh, chart metric specified um a list of cities that positively impacted algorithms on streaming platforms and what uh, the thesis is that if your music did well in these figure cities you it was more likely that your music would start to trend uh, everywhere else in the world and that would globally trigger algorithms on the dsps uh, there was a list of 20 cities seven of those cities um are in india so um it's good for you to keep in mind that there are two ways that you can essentially play india one is actually come into india uh, and play to indian audiences the second is get your music played by indian audiences and use the strength of our number in there to get your music uh, trending across the world um so first let's let's come to the live um side of things uh, i've mentioned there are approximately 100 plus a large format live festivals and concerts uh, in the country um, all of uh, which use international music and predominantly english music um artists of feature um artists international artists on their lineups but if you are thinking of building a strategy on the live side for your artist one thing that uh, we always recommend is uh, use the philosophy of 
three times and three trips to India, or at least three uh, performances and tours um, to India. Um, and this is true not just for um, not just for new or emerging artists. We've seen we've seen this um, kind of methodology or philosophy for, for even the biggest artists. Um, Ed Sheeran uh, took him three attempts to actually get to uh, European ticket prices in India, to actually get to European audience sizes in India. Um, and uh, he finally did that this April uh, or this, this March. Uh, so it's not just an emerging artist that has to um, has to follow the strategy it applies to the biggest of international artists coming um, coming to India. Um, so look at it. Um, there there are some examples, and I'll let some of the speakers and panelists give you the art like artist specific examples of tours that were successful um, in India. And how they actually managed this over three tours of uh, three attempts in India. Um, let's quickly talk about uh, streaming. Um, at this point, the three DSPs, uh, the three Indian DSPs are left are Ghana, Geo Savan, and Gama. Um, though, if I would quickly profile them, Ghana's got um, Ghana's got a larger um, streaming base of uh, regional Indian languages, um, and it, it's got a lot of domestic consumption. Uh, Geo Savan has had um, popularity outside of India and consumption outside of India from the Indian diaspora as well. Um, but it has a good mix of international music um, and Indian music. Uh, Hangama uh, was the first um, out of them all uh, to launch a streaming service, uh, but Hangama has also been a distributor, so Hangama is great because they can actually distribute your music to other streaming platforms, and um, that's been one of the verticals of business. Let's uh, get into some of the, um, yeah, some of the um, kind of uh, footnotes uh, to the conversation uh, that you'll hear. Uh, number one, languages are genres um, in in India. So if you hear the speakers uh, talking about uh, certain languages as genres, this is why um, this is why they're doing that. Hindi and Punjabi have been officially for a while now officially um, registered as as genres within metadata of Apple and, um, and Spotify. YouTube was actually the first uh, to do it, so keep that in mind. Um, you we also kind of segment uh, our music industry into film um, and non-film, um, and that's because. Uh, music industry kind of developed as a byproduct of film, and there, there have been phases. Um, currently, uh, non-film uh, is doing um, much better. So we can say that non-film music is working better than uh, film-based music. Film is not only Bollywood. Uh, there's each of the regional film markets as well. So uh, you need to understand that Bollywood actually refers to only the Hindi film uh, market. Uh, so let's talk about the languages. Um, sorry. I think there's, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you need to uh, look at Hindi, not versus, but Hindi and the other um, um, regional languages. The parliament in India operates in 22 uh, official languages. Um, each state um, has an official language um, and then dialect. So when you're when we're talking about India, we're talking about a continent um, equal in number, if not more than the number of languages that you would have uh, in the European Union. And each of these regional languages or each of these states has their own uh, media and entertainment ecosystem and ecosystem within each of their state or regional languages. Uh, some states have two or three um, languages and uh, you take the state of uh, Karnataka, for example, about um, Kannada as an ecosystem as well as, um, uh, as, well as Tulu, uh, which uh, maybe isn't as prominent, but has a huge diaspora as well. Um, we tend to consider 
uh, we uh, we tend to call them minor languages and major languages. Um, for you, it may not be a minor language, but for us, um, um, major languages is any um, anything more than thirty million native speakers, um, uh, of in terms of media. So I know that um. Yeah, some of the minor languages have at least um yeah at least ten million uh, speakers as well, and you may not consider that minor, but for us, uh, we do. <laughs> um, yeah, for uh, this number is very really important. Um, for all of you listening in, ten percent of the music being streamed in India, and this is kind of a median average. Uh, ten percent is uh, international music. This is uh, predominantly. English and Anglo-American kind of tends to rule the roost uh, within this number. Um, the last thing I'll say is, uh, I guess Sushil will talk more about India International Music Week later on, but uh, yeah, we're doing India International Music Week in Feb next year, 4th to the 6th of Feb in Goa. Uh, quick plug-in, great place for uh, to find your niche uh, and find... Um, what within that 10% is relevant uh, to you and your artist. So that's it from me. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Ref. Um, much, Ref. Good stuff. Oh. <laughs> to, uh, stop sharing. Sorry. Sorry. My voice really loudly. Yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, apologies if it was breaking up a little bit for you. We'll send around the the presentation, but hopefully you got the um, overall information and there's some great links shared in the chat as well. Um, and normally when we do these sessions, we're doing it on markets that are closer to our own. So it's really interesting to hear about the different types of DSPs and the mobile first way of working all of these kind of elements are really really important for managers especially and again uh everyone in the room if you have questions if there are things you want to know now you have some information please put them in the chat right away uh and in the meantime we're going to get to know our panelists so um i'm just going to go around and get you to all introduce yourself say a bit more about what you do um and i'll start with divine if i can Hello, everyone. Hi. hi. Um, so I joined the Indian music and entertainment industry 15 years ago, working for a company called OML, uh, who uh, were specialists in talent management, 360 talent management, where a um, very important point here in the Indian market is that uh, management companies and agents are rolled into one. And they do publicity and marketing as well, which is not the case outside of India, where agents are specialists in terms of commerce and opportunities and management companies do, uh, you know, strategy and look at, you know, overall sort of revenue and vision for the artist. Um, and then publicists do all the PR and marketing stuff uh, that India doesn't function like that. It's, it's literally management agencies who function as you know, pirate managers and quasi sort of uh, managerial resources doing 360 approaches for artists. Um, I started out as a talent manager. Um, I did that for about the first half of my career, um, managing a bunch of independent bands in India. Uh, um, and uh, then I moved on to working at festivals because the company that I was working for uh, raised a round of private funding and we kicked off this festival called NH7 Weekender in India, uh, which is... Uh, referred to in, in the press and media as India's answer to Glastonbury. And it was a fairly big multi-genre affair, went to multiple cities, you know, had about 50 to 60 odd bands playing five stages. A um, lot of big acts have toured India at the back of that festival. I mean, we've had Mark Ronson, Stephen Wilson, Flying Lotus, Mogwai, Vaccines, just to name a few. And then a whole lot of, you know, Indian independent acts, you know, with the likes of Yarema, Namitravedi, Raghudikshit, um, and just a whole lot more divine, um, and even you know a lot of the bands that are popular here in the local scene. Um, and while I was doing programming for that festival, I was also parallelly working on the brand solutions side of things. You know, setting up live IPs for brands like Red Bull and Levi's. Um, and um, I worked at OML for about eight years, and then the last four years I've been setting up my own company, Rebellion Management. Uh, which also is involved in talent management, again, in the 360 fashion. And then we also do a lot of uh, brand solutions and sync work in, in the music and event space. And, um, you know, we also work in um, 
association with content publishers and with record labels, um, you know, syncing songs from their catalog for big brand campaigns. And, you know, because India is going through this massive sort of content movement at the moment, uh, you know, in, in OTTs, in um, the field of advertising and in the field of streaming, um, and also in, in, in the motion pictures side of things. Um, so, so, so that's, that's my um, company in a crux. We do two things mainly. We are a management business and we also do a lot of brand solutions work in the music space. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so yeah. much. If you can share some of the links, especially the, the festival you mentioned in the chat and things like that, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Megha, can I ask you to the next? Hi guys, um, hope you all are doing well. Thank you so much for inviting me for this uh, conference, Emma and everybody else. Guys, um, I am working as Sync and Licensing Senior Manager with Believe right now, which is a France-based company. And um, right now I've been working with them for about two years. And before that, I was working parallelly with Sarigama. Sarigama is one of the record labels in India which is uh, the oldest record label, if I may say. And uh, with them, I did a couple of years, again, two and a half years with them. And before that, I was working with reality shows, reality shows such as music industry, where it was like Indian Idol. And if I have to like put it in terms of other people, you must have heard of American Idol and other places over there, right? So I was working with them. A lot of reality shows I've done previously, and now it's been sort of like nine odd years since I've been working in music industry in totality. So, and I've worked with brands like uh, Red Bull themselves. We have done great campaigns with them. Sync work, of course, is being done with Rebellion also, Dave's company. Uh, we have been working in tandem with them, and uh, that's a great part for us. So that's about me. I'd love to talk about more about sync and when we get to it, I'll pass it to another person right now, Jess. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll go through it quickly. Uh, Dipti, can I get you to introduce yourself? Thanks. Thanks, Jess. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Uh, I'm joining in from the south of India, Bangalore. Um, I'm a generalist in the arts ecosystem in India. So I've worked with festivals. So Dave and I were colleagues for a couple of years. Um, Raf and I have also worked together, uh, Rafael. Um, I've worked with festivals, I've worked with venues. Um, my last job uh, before the one I'm with right now was to launch a new museum space. Uh, I've worked in an arts research company. I was um, uh, directing operations for all of our research projects. Uh, Festivals from India, the link that I shared in the chat was one of the resources that we developed for the arts ecosystem. Uh, that's one of my primary areas of interest. Um, I've also worked with the British Council in India, so the cultural embassy side of things. Um, and across all performance genres, so music, theater, dance, um, and I, my interest and uh, experience primarily is in live um, music, theater, dance, performing arts. I currently work with a venue with um, the Prestige Center for Performing Arts, which is a newish venue. We celebrate our second anniversary in January. Uh, so I'm helping set up the space, um, develop a personality and identity and all of the systems that are required for running a performing arts center. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Sushil? Sure, I thought we were going in alphabetical order. Anyway, I'll get to it. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Sushil here. Uh, I'm the director for India International Music Week, which we will get into a little later on in this conversation. Uh, but I also have my own artist management company and a music consultancy called Stubborn Company. Uh, I've been around. I'm from Mumbai. I live here and I've been in the music, media and entertainment business for the last 20 years, approximately through Rolling Stone, where I was doing uh, more marketing and more activation and which kind of gave birth to the live division at Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, there on, I was with Viacom leading digital. So leading digital for everything from MTV to VH1 uh, and various other channels and a movie studio included uh, with a focus on music, of course. 
Uh, and thereafter, my last stint uh, in, in the corporate sector was at Sony Music for seven years, where I was creating uh, new businesses and new avenues uh, for music as compared to the traditional model of a record label. Uh, so I was creating uh, various other divisions like the brand solutions division, like the live division from Sony Music and the artist management division as well. Uh, my last three years at Sony Music was spending a lot of time with a and um, doing a &R with a lot of artists, managing a lot of rappers. So I did spend a fair bit of time and I still continue to work with the hip hop segment in India pretty actively, which is mainstream in India, which we'll get into a little after in this conversation. Um, over to you, Raf. Rafael? Yeah, okay. Um, I didn't know I needed to introduce myself, but... <laughs> no, it's okay. You just, just say a couple of words. Um, I am uh, Rafael Pereira. I am an executive trustee at the India Music Exchange, and um, I'm a music media and entertainment lawyer. Uh, started out uh, on the events side of the entertainment business about 17 years ago. Um, worked my way uh, up on some of the uh, greatest tours and uh, best festivals to happen um, in India um, and then started advising a lot of the artists and uh, promoters um, on their rights when I was in uh, law school. Um, I built a bunch of companies uh, based on the knowledge I had gathered and uh, some of the voids that I felt existed uh, in the creative industries and um, yeah, currently uh, I run a law firm, which is a full service law firm called Tin Nuts. That's focused on uh, being a full um, full service, uh, 360, uh, 360 creative and cultural focused um, business affairs and legal affairs uh, firm. And um, also... About 10 years ago, uh, my sister and I created a staffing company, which is uh, uh, specifically focused on the events uh, sector uh, in India. And uh, we staff um, all of India's large format uh, concerts and festivals and, uh, and um, handle all the major tours uh, to come in um, to India. And... Um, Together with the law firm and, and this company, we've uh, done a lot of the immigration and visa-related um, issues, let's call them, um, for uh, the international artist uh, trying to get into India and, um, and play uh, some of the concerts. So if you have visa questions, Raf is your man. Uh, <laughs> sure. So um, I just want to dive in first with... Uh, live industry like that's where most people are exporting that's how most people are exporting we've already heard the rule of three but um if you are an artist looking to develop your uh, audience in india what what is the live market like um are we talking about lots of small venues are we um are emerging artists well supported like how what's the basics of how this op operates um divine are you yeah. You, you manage artists, so maybe you have some insight here. So um, I actually want to divide this answer into two parts, right? And that's how the live touring market is positioned in India uh, for local acts here and bands, you know, or artists from outside who are stepping into India. There is a club circuit, you know, like most part of the world, you have venues in eight to 10 cities, you know, that can hold between 250, 300 people. Um, you get a mix of buyout deals, landed offers, some amount of, you know, MG and gate share models, which are available in India. Um, what has always been a challenge in India is that there is no mid layer venue, you know, so a band that's killing, let's say, for example, a post rock band, you know, that's coming into India from Poland or from Germany and, you know, is, is, is packing, you know, 300 capacity venues in Bombay, in Delhi, in uh, Bangalore, you know, which are the main sort of touring markets. And then there is also Pune and Jaipur and Calcutta, you know, which are big, mar decent markets and also has a large chunk of student population. You know, they have big universities. 
um, and you know, hence there is you know that ticket selling pattern that exists. Um, but for a band that's coming to play and have done sold out shows in the club market, there is no medium for them to immediately jump 2,500 or 2,000 capacity venues, right? And that has historically um, always been a, a challenge here. And even for local bands here, after doing well in the club circuit, you're graduating straight to playing NH7 Weekenders or Lollapaloozas, you know, or you're headlining some of the biggest college festivals in India, you know, two audience caps, which are north of, you know, three to 4,000 people. Um, however, now, I mean, this used to be a problem in the pre-streaming era, but now post, you know, all the DSPs coming into India, YouTube becoming a huge streaming machinery in India. Um, I would really encourage anybody wanting to come to India to A, start collaborating with local artists and build your audience base here, right? If I if I have to give some tentpole examples and I'm gonna give very relatable examples. Um, I mean, Ed Sheeran's last performance in India had, you know, Daljeet come on stage and that was one of the biggest viral moments uh, from a music standpoint in India in the last calendar year. Arijit Singh, you know, biggest playback singer in India of the last decade has released a song with Martin Garrix. Um, so, you know, so, so even the biggest pop stars in the world at this point are looking at India as a market where streaming and views and, you know, your audience buckets can be developed. So I would say first try and pop your content in India, right? Build your channel to a point where, you know, there is enough community, you know, and enough people from India who are engaging with you by collaborating with local partners, by releasing you know, your music on platforms like Geo Savan, you know, or Ghana um, have some presence on local radio. And typically, you know, it's it's a very classic how you break into North America model, which most management companies in Europe know that you need to do these hygiene things right. Right. So do that first, build a bit of a base and then come to India. Right. We've we've always been in this position where even when you're representing like one of the bands we represent Raghu Dikshit is, is he's been one of the most legacy breakout artists in India in the last 10 years you know he's, he's performed at Glastonbury he's he's headlined Cambridge Folk Festival this year he played at the Olympics um, you know he's played a lot of the big legacy venues in America including Paramount Theatre, Troubadour but for an Indian band to reach that kind of a spectrum there is obviously heavy investment marketing you know uh, we've we've done we've invested solid money in you know getting interview slots with 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 the bbc with uh, on american radio so i would encourage that for for an european band to come into india you need to apply the same philosophy you know from an indian market because the east is really rising if if i may put it that way right i mean there is so much happening with punjabi music that is charting all around the world K-pop is, I mean, K-pop artists are headlining Coachella at this point, right? So there are a lot of huge audience pools, um, you know, that that exist in India today that can really benefit you. Uh, but before you come here, please get your content, you know, right. You know, maybe do collaborations, release music videos, um, do enough and more press and marketing, build some buzz, and, you know, then um, it's better to come and explore. Um Going back to what I was saying in the beginning is most, so agents per se, yes, there are agents in India, but most agents in India work in management companies, right? So it's better that you tie up with a management company here who are promoting bands in the local circuit, but also has access to festivals. Um, very important from a timeline standpoint, October to March is when most of the shows and tours happen in India. That's always been the timeline here. Um, it's way too hot in the summer, as much as bands do come here, and it rains a lot between July to September. So which is why large formats uh, typically don't happen in India at that time. Uh, we do have some amount of, you know, like warehouse gigs and, you know, maybe six, 700 capacity indoor shows happening. But um, to come here and be part of the live sort of uh, juggernaut, you know, where, you know, you you do your standalone shows and then you play a few festivals, maybe plug yourself in, in some amount of colleges as well. Um, October to March is when majority of, of the big sort of live moments happen in India and even the, the you know, the bigger acts come to India at, at that point. Um, so I would suggest uh, from a booking standpoint, most of the the programmers of festivals and, um, you know, start looking at bands 
six to eight months in advance, which is typically the way it happens globally as well. Um, I mean, barring the big ones where people actually start programming 12 to 14 months in advance. Uh, but that would be, so if you want to play, let's say Lollapalooza that happens in January in India, maybe April or May of the previous year would be a good time to get in touch with, you know, the guys who are booking the festival. Venues in India operate on a monthly, bi-monthly cycle at best. Uh, but I mean, dates do get blocked here because, you know, the music side of things really has exploded post COVID and there are enough and more acts that are coming in from a live band standpoint, from a bass music standpoint, from a hip hop standpoint. Um, and then there are bands in the local scene, you know, across genres um, who sell out, you know, the, the smaller venues pretty easily. So dates do get booked in advance, but like maybe a three or four month heads up, you know, would be, would be ideal. Okay, um, great. So, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's, uh, I Can I jump in, Jess? I have something specific to add here. Um, so uh, we've got someone in the audience, uh, Divya Bhatia, who runs the Jodhpur Riff Festival. And he is um, someone who collaborates a lot. So what Debayan was talking about, collaborating with Indian artists, uh, that's someone you can reach out to immediately. Sorry, Divya. <laughs> but... Um, and then You're there's welcome. also, in, in my experience, um, uh, there are certain cultural embassies in India that are um, very active who can ease that introduction. So I know that there's the British Council, there's the Goethe Institute, the Germans, uh, Pro Helvetia, the, the Switzerland, um, the IFI, the Institut Francais de And, um, sorry for my pronunciation, the French, uh, and the Alliance Francaise Network, the Australian High Commission, um, and the Italian Embassy does a little bit of work in Bangalore. Those are the ones I know so far. Um, they might be open to bringing over um, artists and showcasings because that's part of their mandate. Jess? That's great. Thank you. That's a really good point Look for your local uh, representation. I, I, it would be great. Uh, Sushil, you're Obviously, if we move to festivals quickly a little bit, it would be great to hear more about India International Music Week and generally the festival scene um, in, in India. We even have a question actually here about someone's going to apply for the festival and want to know like what's crucial in terms of the application. Um, uh, quickly, are you talking about India International Music Week specifically or generally the festival segment in India? Um, the question from the audience is specifically on India International Music Week, but it would be good to hear more generally about the... Uh, the... Well, I would say uh, having, witness, having, been, having been a witness to, um, to, the, to the Indian music industry and not only been witnessed, but also been a core part of it over the last 15 years, I think it's a, from, from a person's point of view who's also a music enthusiast and a fan at the same time, I think it's an overwhelming time to be in the country because every next morning that you wake up, there's a new festival, uh, which can be a good sign and a bad sign. Uh, so far, it's been a great sign. Uh, I think the life side of things, not only with artists having worked their audiences, you know what Dave was talking about, about working your audiences. Here's just a tip for you. TikTok is banned in India. So if you really want to work your audiences on social media, it's Instagram. Instagram has to be your... Uh, obviously, apart from YouTube, of course, because as the, YouTube is the primary platform for consumption of music uh, to a much wider audience. But with respect to international music, uh, Instagram is one platform that you really got to work. And so, yeah, from a festival's point of view, there are all kinds of festivals that are happening in, in the country. And there are festivals in palaces like Divya's festival, like uh, Deepthi just mentioned. There are festivals in palaces, on the beaches, in the forests, on the mountains, uh, in jails, uh, defunct jails, of course, uh, and in various, all, uh, all that a human imagination can lead yourself to. And that's the good part about it. There are urban festivals and there are travel festivals and destination festivals happening in the Himalayas, uh, happening on the beaches of Goa. That's where we are, uh, India International Music Week. Quick plug-in and quick information. Uh, it's India's first global music conference and showcase festival placed in Goa uh, from the in February 4th, 5th, and 6th uh, of 2025. Uh, it, is, it is a three-day affair. 
uh, with a conference in the daytime and a showcase festival, which is spread across uh, various venues, multiple venues, all walkable distance from each other. Our applications to play at India International Music Week are currently open. For the next two days, we close on the 10th of October. So that's a quick heads up on that. Um, and yeah, we're working with we're, we're working with uh, trade organizations from all over Europe and all over export offices from around the world as well and all over Europe in partnering with them and making sure that this is an optimum opportunity for artists to play at India International Music Week. So do get in touch with us. Uh, contact at iimw.in. Uh, is where you can write in, get in touch with us and ask any questions you might have. But most important that if you're interested in playing at India International Music Week, uh, we've got two more days to apply online. So IMW.IN is the website and you can just lead yourself from there. I've shared the, the um, Google form. Thank you. Chat, so everyone take a look at that for sure. Um, I mean... There's so many questions I could ask. Uh, so I'm going to focus on what people are asking in the chat. Um, when it comes to promotion, we'll we'll just skip to that. We're, you know, away from live and more to like releases, promotion, but also, I guess, for, for your live show. There's one question here about meta ad networks. Um, like many advertisers say having streams from India can trigger algorithmic growth on Spotify. How common are music ads on Facebook or Instagram have you seen this be successful for people? Is this a strategy that you recommend? Um, can I take that? Yeah. Go for it, Dave. Yeah. So um, any uh, band that's touring consistently in India in the public touring market, you know, doing their headline shows, album launch shows, um, bands even tour in India at the back of promoting music videos, um, meta ads and YouTube ads and you know, and Meta and Instagram, both. These are the main three platforms where artists are advertising in India, um, you know, creating very focused target groups, right? Um, and that has actually been hugely influential in, in bringing audiences, you know, to their shows outside of their core group of friends um, because Meta actually allows you to use artists, not just from your genre, but also from crossover genres you know, uh, as a target mechanism. So if you're representing a band that plays Indian contemporary music, um, that particular act can have 10 bands from that genre in their target group, but then also have Bollywood composers in the target group, right? Because the sound to a certain degree is similar, right? The the compositions sometimes are, you know, um, of uh, in a certain bucket. Um, and then you can also add people who have watched you at festivals, right? So Lollapalooza is a target group. NH7 is a target group. You know, Echoes, Echoes of the Earth is a target group. So artists, you know, who have been in the touring cycle in, in India um, are really using Meta, YouTube and uh, Instagram heavily, uh, you know, to advertise their shows. Um, what we've also learned um, over a period of time is that um, it's important to, so the, the, the markets that you're big in, those shows are going to sell well organically anyway. You know, most uh, most of the ticket buying in India in the last three to five years has actually happened via Instagram, link in bio, and not so much on artist websites, which is still actually buying tickets or websites is still the culture internationally or buying it off a platform like Ticketmaster. In India, most of the ads are actually targeted via the Instagram page of the artists and the artist makes a link tree of, you know, multiple sort of cities or markets that they are performing in. And then it redirects to a ticketing, you know, the landing page of a ticketing platform, whether it's Insider or Book My Show or Scalebox or, you know, there are a bunch of them here. Um, so, yes, the answer is um, meta ads are a huge positive and everybody who has, you know, sort of uh, adapted to it is is benefiting a lot. Um there's also one more thing is because India is going through this massive tech boom, right? Um, so most of the larger, large format live players in India in their core are actually tech companies, right? So recently, uh, Zomato, who are like the DoorDash equivalent of India, have bought out a company called Insider, who were, you know, the second largest ticketing platform in India. Um, and Book My Show, who, uh, you know, uh, at, at a legacy level has largely been a movies and, you know, cricket and sports ticketing company have also heavily gotten into, you know, the ticketing business. Um, so 
and they are all sitting on huge like hundreds and you know millions of databases so there's a lot of like push notifications and you know ads and you know discount codes and you know that kind of mechanisms that are happening happening as well so it's actually great balance it's 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 a great time to have these you know things at the back end and you know to to market your music in india and uh, really help with your ticket sales and touring great thank you so much for that insight and there's a bunch of links in the chat as well so uh check them out especially of those um texting sites thank you so much dipti that's really useful uh especially as then divan started mentioning them all so it's perfect um i really want to make sure that we get onto this so um mecca i really wanted to speak about sync and i mean this kind of goes hand in hand with bollywood no does it uh can you tell us more about the opportunities in sync yes it completely goes hand in hand with bollywood is what we have known so far right like um, sync is synonymous to bollywood and that's this is what everybody believes in india right now but uh, having said it we have seen some changes happening on that side so far in india what we know as music consumption is largely happening of bollywood music people are uh, creating bollywood music promoting their movies through it and all of those things are ha happening uh, and it, it becomes like integral part of their success the bollywood music of the movies that are happening in india right um having sa said this after covid right we have seen a lot of change coming into the segment where people were sitting at their home they were kind of uh, getting introduced to new music and they, when they were getting introduced to new music all of this new artist edm hip hop section pop section all of this started buzzing in through their uh, phones like uh, we mentioned earlier india's mobile heavy and on the streaming apps and everywhere else we started seeing a lot of uh, people um building towards your indie music your edm music and they started liking all of this it 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 is it can be said like we are supremely there just yet but i think our gates are open now for the different sorts of music as well bollywood still rules everything if we happen to see there are like so many examples that i can put across for you all um the biggest one of them would be bridgerton i'm sure everybody must have seen bridgerton where we have seen a lot of bollywood sync happening we did not see kind of indie sync happening or edm sync happening through india right but bollywood sync happening the office is another example where we saw a lot of uh, bollywood music coming in the big bang theory where bollywood music was used everything out there hollywood also kind of feels Uh, they can use the bollywood music from india they do not realize the power of the indian music that is just coming up in india and they can utilize that power right now which was um, which we kind of are seeing a movement in that right the movement is just about how the music is ongoing right now this is where we see like bit of change coming in but yes that change is coming in slowly gradually but definitely coming in for that Amazing. So interesting to hear how things are changing for sure. Um I would love to find out a little bit more about the the release market. I know there was a question earlier about how like the the kind of percentages any of you have insight on like what percentage of listening is happening on those homegrown apps versus the likes of Spotify and YouTube and stuff like that. Um are they very prevalent are most people using jsavan and uh hangama hangama and the other one what was the third one sorry i did put it in my list um but yeah does, do any of you have any insight on that i'll i'll take that um spotify like you know from from an international music point of view spotify is the leading platform uh until very recently obviously jio savan was a very is is still a very fast growing platform and it's going to continue to remain that from a very local market point of view but from an international market point of view from you know what we call metro cities in india which are more urban markets spotify is the go to uh platform however i would say youtube is not something that can be ignored and when i say youtube i do not mean just youtube or just youtube music or just youtube shorts i mean all of the above um uh, it is a platform with the maximum number of users even beyond spotify and you know as we say indians like to watch music 
Um, mm -hmm. So literally, if you're on the streets of any any city, not only an urban or a semi-urban city in in India, uh, if your your local taxi driver is watching a film while he's driving you, your local tuk tuk driver is watching music videos while he's driving you, um, and that's while they're at work. So you can imagine when they're not driving or when they're not riding a tuk tuk, what they're up to. So that's a kind of kind of give you an idea of the reality on the streets and the consumption is extremely high on YouTube. Uh, it's not, you know, when Deva, Devayan was talking about get your music videos right and uh, work your music, <clears throat> um, work your music in the market before you get to the market. Absolutely right and absolutely correct. Uh, but yeah, again, I say absolutely. At the same time, I'll say that nothing, there's no absolute. There has been, there have been times when artists have worked their markets from the live segment without, and I'm talking about this is even before streaming was as active or as consumed in India as it is right now. Uh, but there have been various examples of artists like FKJ and Dub FX. These artists were in India 10, 12 years ago or so, playing to a club to 50 people uh, 12 years ago. And they've consistently worked their audiences. They've worked the market. A big part of their consistency has been a consistent partner. And I think that is a key in finding a right partner. It's I was just writing this on chat and giving this tip to somebody else as well right now that it's a highly fragmented market. And trying to dive head straight into it and trying to understand every nuance of it by yourself is going to take you a decade. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, your, that's going to be your starting point. So find your right partner and stay consistent. Uh, align with a partner who shares a vision for your artist or for you, if you're an artist yourself, uh, for the market and have a plan to it and give it some time, give it consistency um, and it will it will come back to you. There's no two ways that that wouldn't no. happen. Just quickly, thanks so much for that. Just quickly, I, I'm really interested to know, we're talking a lot about partners and we're talking a lot about finding other artists and we have a question from a sync agent who also is looking to like find Indian artists. Where where do we discover these things? Where would you go if you were looking, or where would you advise people to go to to discover these things? Um, I, yeah, any of you again can take this. Dipti, I don't know if you have any, you've been sharing so many useful links. I don't know if you have any useful points about where to find these partners and then Megha, of course. So many of the platforms that um, all of the speakers um, in this room have talked about, they have um, a lot of uh, artists featured. There isn't one or two or three uh, comprehensive um, platforms where you can find this apart from these streaming platforms. Uh, so it, as uh, Sushil said, it is a fragmented market and it's fragmented in terms of um, information as well and databases as well, uh, which is why finding partners is important. They will point you in the right direction. It also depends entirely on the kind of taste making that you want to um, be uh, sort of indulging. So you know your market, you know what kind of artists you want to uh, identify. Um, and you've got such a huge gamut. You've got hardcore Indian classical artists, um, you've got folk artists, you've got indie, you've got, and within indie, you've got so many, a hundred genres within that. So it's really hard to say, um, here, go look at this place and here you'll get this information. So partners are important. Uh, research, the kind of festivals, uh, because there's a lot of content that comes out of there, also very useful. Thanks so much. Mecca, did you want to add something to, to that? Sure. Um, that's a that's a great question, actually. A lot of our artists knowing this will be really very happy if they're getting a sync chance in London or elsewhere outside India, because uh, usually what happens is in India, we are kind of bending towards Bollywood music for the nostalgic value of it. But having said it, there are a lot of platforms out there, uh, such as communities, which is like Rolling Stone or your DC Hip Hop or uh, anything else that has. Um, let me put it like that. Spotify charts also is a great way to find uh, artists for yourself from where you can find an artist, approach them for their sync outside of India. And if they're working with some partner already, 
like uh, us as believe also we are working with a lot of artists right and these artists are in line with us if you reach out to these artists they'll put you through us we can help you find sync placements for them outside india and if you're doing anything you can work with us and those artists through you know music worldwide there are a lot of uh, conferences that are happening for these artists also so from there finding these artists are really very easy you just have to go through the charts you have to go through the social media platforms where these people are putting out a lot of their content on daily basis and um, there you can find a lot of artists yeah. yeah just want to chime in on one last thing here while yes we are talking about uh, you know a lot of the bollywood and you know the punjabi sync market which is where the large pool of monetization is um the ott platforms which is your amazon netflix disney uh they have sh- you know music supervisors you know who are working on um a- as supervisors on web shows and films on on streaming platforms in india have actually become a good uh, sort of support system for independent <laughs> music syncs in in india that's where a lot of indie music is being synced which is uh you know published by independent artists not necessarily doesn't have label backing uh necessarily doesn't have platform uh, marketing in that sense uh but there are, there are a lot of music supervisors in india uh, that you know that you can look up i mean i'm going to put some names on on the chat um and uh, you know you can connect with them on instagram you can connect with them on linkedin and you know submit your music uh, via them as well so international music i mean most of the music which is synced in india is is actually the local content right um um and and i mean there are actually very few mo- um uh you know big international syncs that happen in india because for really famous song i mean for example if you want to sync adele's music that's really expensive and a lot of time you know marketing budgets don't allow that here um but uh, but yeah for for outside of bollywood for independent arts um you know uh, working with supervisors on a day to day manner and you know you know scheduling listening sessions could be a good way to get your music placed nice thank you so much um yeah please do share more more links in the chat we'll we'll send round a when we send the recording round we'll also send a big list of all the links that were shared in the chat so that you can follow up on them um so yeah don't be afraid to to kind of post a bunch of those in uh we're really at the end so just before we go i'd love you all to just or any of you that are able to just give us a entry point to the market maybe it's a radio station maybe it's a company that you love maybe it's a publication or something so people can just start their kind of exploration into india um so shiva i'm going to start with you sorry <laughs> uh well yeah one thing's important is that you've got to get to india to understand india it's very diff- it's going to be very difficult for anybody anywhere in the world to understand a market as fragmented as this and as complicated and as diverse and diverse and complicated kind of go together um to understand it from uh, from any kind of foreign land so uh i would kind of plug in india international music week again that's that's where exploration should, should start it's built exactly for this not only for international markets it's also built like the, it's built exactly for the intent of indian music and indian music export so the whole point is to is to come in with a collaborative mind with an open mind and and work <clears throat> with a spirit of uh being reciprocal with the market uh, i think that's very important because uh there there are a lot of people who would think that hey am i going to go to india to work with india how's that going to be uh or is that going to be india trying to get into my market and I, i don't think that should be a necessary kind of uh, objective i think you should come in with a collaborative approach and with a reciprocal spirit um and hopefully see you in goa perfect thank you yeah make sure you check it out um dipti do you have a recommendation of what people should check out um what i've posted in chat already i think uh, amit uh, gurbaksani does a really good job of covering uh the scene uh so between his podcast and just looking up everything that he writes um mm-hmm. it's a good way to get an understanding of especially indie music um i don't think he covers folk and classical as much um but there are you know you can always reach out to me to see if you'd like to learn more about that and i could potentially help 
folk music um, there's another uh, organization which i think raf works with a lot it's called the anahad foundation and i'll type that into the chat as well amazing thank you so much they're great great starting points and uh, ban yeah just uh, taking off um, you know from what dipti was saying so amit is amit gurbaksani is also running a podcast on spotify uh, that has a lot of uh, you know big case studies on you know how independent music is breaking out from india uh, they have done an episode on recently on you know how pratik kuhad uh, made a english song chart in india with you know this largely being a hindi and regional music market or how you know whole hanuman ka in big dogs sort of uh, you know that the song in the video came into being and how it has kind of crossed over all around the world uh, so i i would highly recommend his podcast as well um and uh, from a um, i mean rolling stone india obviously is has been uh, you know over the last 8 uh, to 10 years really been pushing the buttons and you know doing a lot of reviews and pieces and articles about you know independent music um wild city um based based out of delhi and you know the guys who are behind magnetic fields um have done an incredible job in capturing the electronic music market which includes techno bass hip hop um you know all of all of those genres um and uh, yeah i think i think these would be good uh, publications uh, to study there is actually a, a bit of a lack of a serious counterculture publication in india and that you know that void has been there for a while and everyone's again you know going back to our fragmentation problem um but uh, hopefully uh, that will get solved soon um i have recently noticed there's a magazine called ralph uh you know which is london beijing and new york based that's who are opening up shop in india who largely talk about music and a lot of pop culture so i'm hoping they will uh, fill the gap uh, pretty soon interesting thanks so much they especially those uh, publications so so useful uh, megha do you want to share where people can Sorry. right so as i mentioned previously there is great like everybody has kind of covered everything as of this moment <laughs> whatever we can go whatever we can do it's all there so she'll be the rap also at some places so um yes as i said the communities are the best thing to uh, connect with people there are conferences that are happening in india around music and for music all about music is being one of them and uh, there we are having a lot of sessions in that what people are speaking of how we can integrate music in different different sections how music is performing what is happening around it we have stalwarts of industry coming to these conferences there are like legal people coming there are sing people coming in everything is coming in so you can just connect with these communities out there speak with them about your requirements everybody will be more than happy to support you all there rolling stone being uh, primary of them and not to forget build your relationship with people in the industry that is the foremost advice that i give to people relationships go a long way for everybody else um you can if you can see some brands if you can connect with some uh, production houses out here you can help you pitch your music internally sync your music somewhere all of this can be a great start for everyone and uh, the links are already there in the messages Yes, we are sharing the links and check them out because there are tons of uh, artists that you might not have heard of before. There are potential collaborations for you and great, great options. So, uh, without further ado, sorry for going over, but thank you so much to our speakers for joining us. Um, thank you so much you. for your presentation and for sharing so generously. We really, really appreciate it, and we will see you again next time. And see you in February. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye.